You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Give me a few moments if you would. Go with me to 1 Kings, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, 1 Kings 17, and I want to begin reading at verse 15, 1 Kings 17 and 15. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Uh, and the word of the Lord is blessed. Give me a few moments on this Mother's Day to speak to you from this subject, running on empty. Running on empty. I see somebody felt that in the house this morning. Somebody felt that online. I heard you in your spirit saying, Pastor, you're talking directly to me. That is exactly where I am in my life right now. Uh, as I stated earlier, I thank God for all of the mothers and the strong women uh, that are in the building and in the house this morning. Uh, the Lord gave me this word earlier this month. As a matter of fact, I talked about it a few weeks ago a little bit I even mentioned it on the prayer line and as I was meditating this week and working to put together a special message just for Mother's Day I had something else uh, that I was working on but the Holy Spirit stopped me and said go back to 1 Kings 17 go back to that story because there is something in there that I need to highlight there is something in that story about this particular woman this widowed woman there is something about her that we need to see on this morning we don't even know her name we just know she was a widow at Zarephath we don't even know her name but what we do know is her condition we understand the circumstances that are affecting the way in which she operates the way in which she works the way in which she lives and because we don't know her name but we know her condition that means it could be any one of us that is in the house this morning all of us that are in here have some type of condition uh, that is going on there is a condition uh, that is affecting us and the Holy Spirit said there's something about her story that needs to be illuminated there's something about her story that needs some light to be shined on it there's something about her story that maybe we missed the time of two as much as we've read it but there's something that the Holy Ghost wants to do in the house to help and to clarify some things so he told me that Brandon I need to shine a light on this story of a woman who was running on empty because there's some people in the house there's some women in the house on this Mother's Day who are tapped in who are here online and you're running on empty there's some mothers in the house who are running on empty there's some brothers in the house who are running on empty and when I say running on empty that literally means you ain't got nothing in you uh, when I say you're running on empty, that means you are not filled. Does anybody know what it's like when you constantly moving and constantly going, but you feel like you got nothing left in you? You're just doing what you got to do to get by, but people don't understand. I ain't got nothing left to give you. You ever said that to anybody? Man, look, I ain't got nothing left to give you right now. I didn't give everything I had to everybody else this week. I don't have nothing left to give you. I'm not filled right now. I'm not myself right now. As a matter of fact, it's like I'm just running on films right now. I'm just running on films. You know how it is when you ain't got the gas in your car and you're trying to make it home and you're just trying to get there and you're saying, I'm on E right now, but I, if I could just get to my destination, if I can just get to my gas station, you know how it is when you're riding on E for so long. You just be praying. Lord, you start turning off the radio, start rolling around the windows. You start doing everything you can because you say, if I could just get through on these films, if I can just get to a gas station to fill me up and somebody's right here saying listen I'm on fumes right now everything I got has been taken out of me and I barely made it to the house of the Lord do you understand what it's like when I'm running on fumes that means some some people that are in the house right now you you, you operating your business just running on fumes you don't even have any fresh ideas anymore you just running on fumes there's some people that are in the house right now you can't even get through to your spouse you can't get through your, to your children 
children because you're just operating on fumes right now. There's some people who are here, you're running out of patience. You have no patience. You're just running on fumes right now. There's some people here, you saying, I ain't got no more tears left to cry. I'm just running on fumes right now. You say, I, I don't feel like I have enough time. I'm just operating on fumes right now. There are those of you who are in the house who can identify with what I'm talking about. There are those of you who are here who say, Pastor, I'm here this morning, but you don't understand, man. I'm just running on fumes. The Lord said, go to 1 Kings 17. Because the Holy Spirit wanted to share something with you today if you're running on fumes. If you're running on empty. The story centers around Elijah the prophet who was coming off a long episode in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness. He was in a desolate place. He was in a narrow place. And it's while at this time he's being sustained by a small brook. The ravens would bring him food day and night. Isn't it good to know that God has a way of sustaining you even when you're in the wilderness? That God has a way of giving you everything you need even when you're in a dry place? That God has a way of making sure your needs are met even if he got to use the ravens to do it? Uh, Elijah was being brought food by ravens. You don't understand ravens usually eat the eyes of some of their dead, the flesh. They start to eat. Ravens weren't designed to bring nobody food. But when God got your back, even in the wilderness, he'll make your enemies bless you. And they don't even know why. But all of a sudden, the Bible says that the brook dried up. God caused the brook to dry up on this prophet. God caused his brook to dry up. God caused his food source to stop because he needed him to take on a new assignment. He needed him to go in another direction. He needed his prophetic voice in another space. So you got to understand that sometimes in life when your brook dries up, it's not because of anything you've done. It's just God saying, I need to get you to another place. I need to get you in another direction. There's somewhere I need you to go because you have a prophetic call on your life, because you have an anointing on your life, and you've been sitting at the brook for a long time, and you, maybe you got comfortable just sitting by the brook. Maybe you got comfortable in your wilderness, but God says you got something bigger and better and greater on the inside of you. So in order to get you to move, I got to dry up your food source. I got to dry up the thing that you've been living off of. I got to dry off the thing that's been sustaining you because that's the only way I can get you to move. That's the only way I can get you. To, I got to dry that relationship up. I had to dry that job up. I had to dry your money up because if I had not have dried it up you'd still be sitting in the same place you'd still be doing the same thing so God had to allow Elijah's brook to dry up but listen to what he said once he let it dry up he said listen now I need you to go over to Zarephath I need you to go to a place I need you to do ministry there's some things that I need you to do over in Zarephath there's some people that you need to see over in Zarephath and in 1 Kings 17 and 8 the Bible says and the word of the Lord came unto Elijah. You got to understand the word of the Lord means the matters of the Lord. It means the affairs of the Lord. It means the things of God. God started talking to Elijah who was a prophet. God started talking to Elijah who was a special messenger of the Lord. God started talking to the one that could utter on his behalf. God said, listen man, I need you to arise. Listen man, I need you to get up out of your depression. I need you to get up out of your lonely place. I need you to get up out of your narrow place because there's something that I need you to utter there's something that I need you to do there's places that I need you to go and you can't do what I've assigned you to do while you're sitting here in this brook so the Bible says that God told him to get up it told him to arise it told him to stand up and get thee to Zarephath which belonging to Zidon and dwell there I need you to get to Zarephath and I need you to dwell there I need you to remain there I need you to take 
take up residence there. There's an area that I need you to go. There's an area that needs your presence. I need you to get up from your current position and place yourself in Zarephath. Place yourself in UFC. Place yourself in on the next street. Place yourself in this position because there's something that you need to do. There's something that you need to say. The Bible says I want you to get to Zarephath and I want you to dwell. Now watch this. He said, behold, I have commanded a widow there. I have commanded. God says, I've already given the order. I've already spoken. I've already made it happen. That there is a widow there in Zarephath. There is somebody that's going to take care of you while you're there. Now remember, we're speaking to a condition. And I believe that God has me prophetically speaking this morning to the house to, in someone's condition. Condition is there's a widow. Do you understand this thing? God said, I commanded a widow. To take care of you. What? Let me break this down. A widow by definition meant somebody in a desolate place. It meant somebody in a desolate house. It meant somebody that had been deserted by people. Somebody that was in a state of bleak and dismal emptiness. It meant to somebody that is feeling and showing misery. Somebody that is in a state of unhappiness. Somebody that is lonely. Somebody that is bleak. Somebody that is depressing. Somebody that is empty. Somebody that is already there. God tells Elijah that you need to get up out of your space and I need you to get to Zarephath because I've commanded somebody that's desolate. I've commanded somebody that's deserted. I've commanded somebody that's lonely. I've commanded somebody that's unhappy I've commanded somebody that's bleak I've commanded somebody that's depressed I've already given the order that the person that is in that condition they are going to take care of you God said I've already done I've already worked it out but here is the thing many times the person don't even know God has worked it out but I'm already sending you there because I need you to connect with the person that is in that place He says, even in her current condition, I've still given her the order to sustain you. Even in her current space in life, I've still given the order for her to allow you to abide in that place. To sustain means to feed. It means to abide. It means to remain. So God says, listen, I understand you are a prophet, Elijah, but listen, you got to get up and go because there's somebody that's in a worse situation than you and I need you to connect with that person and the person that you connect with that's feeling that way, I've already given a command that they are going to sustain you that they are going to feed you that they are going to allow you to remain in that place now look at what God said I'm going to send you to somebody who's already running on empty I'm going to send you to somebody that ain't got enough I'm going to send you to somebody that is lacking in their life I'm going to send you to somebody that is unhappy in their life I'm going to send a prophetic word to somebody that's in a bleak state I'm going to send you all the way there just so that you can remain in their house just so that you can remain in their space just so you can occupy their time and their energy I'm going to send do you understand how good God is some of you may have walked in here bleak you may have walked in here down but you walked in the Zarephath today and there's a prophet that's staying right here in this house and God said you got to stay there and you got to remain there because God said I've already given the order so the Bible says, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And the Bible says, when he came to the gate of the city, behold, there was a widow woman. There was an empty woman in a desolate place. 
there was a lonely woman in a desolate situation. And when he walks up, there's this woman and the Bible says she's there gathering sticks. Uh, she's lonely, but she's still gathering. She's empty, but she's still working. She's on film, but she's still doing what she got to do. There's somebody in the house today. You're running on films, but it ain't stopped you from working. You're tired in your body, but I still got to get up. I still got to do what God told me to do. I still got to work even though I don't feel like it. The Bible says she's still out in the field. I'm talking to some mother that's in the house today. Life has dealt you a bad hand, but yet you still out there working. You still out there trying to get it. You still out there trying to do what you got to do. You ain't making no excuses about the hate, the plate that you was dealt or the hand that you was dealt. You just out there doing what you got to do. The Bible says this woman was out there. She's gathering sticks. And the man calls to her and said, hey, fetch me something. In the midst of what she's dealing with, in the midst of her current condition, he says, fetch me something. Now let's break this down. Fetch means to grasp. It means to bring. It means to seize something. Wait a minute. In spite of where you are, there's still something I need you to grab on to. In spite of where you are, there's still something I need you to receive. He said, listen, I need you to receive what I'm about to say. I'm about to ask you for something. I'm about to ask you to do something, and I need you to receive what I'm about to say. He said, fetch me. Look at what he says. I pray when he says I pray that is emphatically he said listen what I'm saying to you I'm asking you emphatically I'm begging you to receive what I have to say I'm begging you to take in what I have to say I'm begging you to hear what I'm telling you I ain't just saying to get me no water for nothing there's a reason why I'm asking you to do something there's a reason why I'm asking you to get me some water there's a reason why I'm asking you to receive what I'm saying there's a reason why I I need you to grasp it. There's a reason why I need you to hold on to it. The Bible says, I'm fetch me, I pray thee some water that I may drink it. God already told me that she was going to sustain me. I just need her to catch what I'm saying. He already told me there was something in it for her, but I just need her to catch what I'm saying. See, if she brings me the water, then she's connected to the promise. The promise was a result of her action. So if she got me what I asked her, it qualified her for the promise that God would take care of her. Okay, all right, somebody. All right, he, listen, 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 listen. He said, bring me some water. And the Bible said in verse 11, as she was going to fetch the water, look at what he said. Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in that hand. I'm trying to get you to tap all the way in. Give me just a morsel of bread. Give me just a scrap of bread. Give me just a piece of bread. Give me just some crumbs of bread. Just put the crumbs in my hand. I don't just give me a little bit of what you got. Just put it in my hand because there's something bigger at play. Just give me a little bit of your time. Just give me a little bit of your service. Just give me a little bit of your energy. Just give me a little bit of your voice. Just give me a little bit of your voice on the prayer line. Just give me a little bit of your time in mental power. Just give me a little bit of your time in the women of that just give me a little bit of time evangelizing on the street just give me a little bit of time bringing your kids to rehearsal just give me a little bit of time tapping in just give me a little bit oh but she said listen as God liveth I have not a cake I ain't got a cake I just asked for a morsel she said oh okay 
And you, sometimes, see, that's the problem. Sometimes you hear what you want to hear. I asked for a little bit. You went to a whole cake. I asked for a little bit. Oh, God, he want us to do it. I just asked for a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of your time, that's all. Just one service in the prayer line, that's all. Just, 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 just 15 minutes, that's all. Just, just, not 24 hours, just 15. Just, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. She said, I don't have a cake. All I got is a handful of meal in the barrel. All I got is a little bit of oil in my cruise. I'm out here working and I'm gathering sticks. I'm running on empty. I'm gathering sticks so that I could dress it, so that I can make it for me and my son. You asking me for something, but you don't understand the responsibilities that I have on me. I'm out here working, gathering sticks for my son so that we may eat it and die. You asking me for something and you don't know what I'm going through. Not only do you not know my condition, you don't understand I'm already running on empty. You don't understand, preacher, I'm already in a desolate place. You don't understand I already got a child with me you don't understand I'm running on empty you don't understand I have another life I'm responsible for you don't understand I have responsibilities that are important to me you don't understand how empty I am as a matter of fact what she's saying is preacher you just triggered me you asking me for something when it seems like you don't understand what my story is you asking me for something and you don't know the things I've been through you're asking me to protect participate and you don't know that I'm barely standing you want me to participate and you don't understand that I'm at my wits end you want me to lock in but you don't understand what I'm dealing with since it's Mother's Day you don't understand what I'm dealing with as a woman you don't understand the conditions that I'm going through as a woman you don't understand the whole entire condition of motherhood you don't know what it's like as a mother to be lonely you don't know what it's like to be exhausted you don't know what it's like to suffer from anxiety you don't know what it's like to be depressed you don't know what it's like to have my buttons pushed every day you don't know the added psychological stress of modern day motherhood in the midst of everything that we're going through today you don't know about my mental health you don't know how many times as a woman how I've been labeled by my mind and defined by my, my, my been labeled by my mood and defined by my symptoms rather than somebody try to understand the root cause of my emotional cries in this season you don't understand the weight of expectations on me prophet you want me to tap in you want me to give you some bread but you don't understand how I suffer from mom guilt you don't understand how I'm inundated on every day every day somebody trying to tell me how I should raise my children how I should live my life you don't understand what I got to hear from my family you don't understand what I had to hear from my friends you don't understand how many times I second guess myself you don't understand how many times I've got to feed my child and then die how many times I'm going back over my life thinking about all the bad decisions that I made you don't understand what I'm going through pastor you don't understand what I'm going through preacher you don't understand you asking me for a little bit but you don't understand sleep deprivation you don't understand the impact of me not having to sleep uh, because I got to raise all these kids by myself you don't understand how it's messing with my mental health you don't understand how my lack of sleep uh, is contributing to my depression and my anxiety and my stress and my panic attacks you don't understand you're asking me for a little bit but you don't understand how I'm trying to balance family and work in the midst of what you asking for you don't understand what it's like to be a woman living in a man's world where I'm trying to deal with all of these responsibilities and I can't even get the money that I'm owed on my job my male counterparts are making more than me you don't understand you keep asking me for a little bit you don't know what it's like for me to be the primary caregiver all the time you don't know what it's like for me to have to worry about when the kids get sick or when Nana needs help or somebody else needs their medication and I gotta take up their calls too you don't understand what you asking me for you asking me for a little bit of bread but you don't under understand the glass 
glass ceiling uh, that still exists for me out there. You asking me for some bread, but you don't understand the violence against women. You don't understand what we got to deal with every day. You asking me for some bread, but you don't understand that I'm struggling with my self-worth and my body image. Just because we moms don't mean we're affected by body shaming or other people's expectations. You think just because I'm a mom, I don't go through it when I got to live in a world that's full of BBLs and pills and shots every day. You don't think it mess with my mind. You don't think it mess with my body when that's all I see on TV all day and it's creating a bad image of myself and I'm struggling with low self-esteem and I got to look at my stress marks in the mirror and wonder if he's still like me and wonder if I still got it. You don't understand how that messes with me. You don't understand how that feels to be at a certain age and I still ain't got no man and I'm still not married and I'm still not where I want to be and you tell me to give my time in church and I'm trying to find a man and I'm trying to find a husband with a little free time I got. You still want me to give you some time like this? Do you understand all these scars and stress? Do you understand what I'm going through? Do you understand you want time and you asking me to carry the mental load? I got a mental load on me, preacher. Do you understand the details that come with just being a mom? Do you understand scheduling? Do you understand dentist appointments? Do you understand calls and birthdays and allergies and appointments? Do you understand what I'm feeling, preacher? You want me to give a little bit, but do you know what it feels to parent solo right now? Do you know what it feels to hold all the financial responsibilities? Do you understand what it feels to deal with homework and after school programs? Do you understand what it feels? I'm just trying to gather my sticks because at the end of the day, I'm running on empty and you want me to give you what? You want me to give you the little bit I have left? Are you serious? All I'm trying to do is bake my cake. And me and my son are going to die. I'm right on empty, preacher. I ain't got nothing else left to give. I'm just going to turn my, my cake in and die. I'm just going to give it all up right now. I'm at my wit's end and I don't see a way out. And you're just saying all I can do is give you a little bit of bread. Are you serious right now? And I can see Elijah saying, I'm not going to back down, but I'm going to keep asking you for the water. And I'm going to keep asking you for the bread because Elijah understood something that she could not see because she was on empty and that's what you gotta understand when you're operating on fumes and you're running on empty you can't see all the time what God is doing that's why Elijah got to dwell in your house because sometimes he could see the things you can't see and sometimes he's gonna push you when you don't feel like you can't be pushed Elijah said I understand that's all that's going on but I still need you to give me some cake and I still need you to give me some water and Elijah said to her in verse 13 let me assure you of something that when you give me this bread and when you give me this water that something's going to change in your life he said when you connect with me and connect with me on this level he said unto her to fear not you don't have to fear in this season if you give me a little bit of time you don't have to fear if you give me a little bit of service you don't have to fear if you give me a little bit of energy you don't have to fear in this season he said I don't want you to fear I don't want you to be afraid I don't want you to be stressed out all I need you to do do is give me some water all I need you to do is give me some cake what you don't understand lady is that there is something on my life that God has already called me and God has already promised to sustain me as his preacher and God has already promised to bless those that bless me and curse those that curse me so when I ask 
you for your little bit. The only thing I'm trying to do, I'm asking you for a little bit so God could give you a whole lot more. That when you tap in in this season, I know you feel like you don't have it. I know you feel like you're running on empty. But I dare you with the little bit you have. I dare you to tap in. And I dare you to give it to God with the little energy you have left. I dare you to give God all you got. I dare you to give him your best praise with the little bit you have. I dare you to give him your best worship with the little bit you have. I dare you to give him your service with the little bit you have. And the Bible says, guess what, y'all? The Bible said that she told Elijah that I was just going to make it for my son and we were going to die. But Elijah said, listen to me. If you tap in, something's going to happen. And if you keep Keep reading the story. The woman did what Elijah said. She gave him a little bit of bread and she gave him a little bit of water. She tapped in and gave him her little. And the Bible says the next day when she went back to her barrel, it was still a little bit more in it. And the next day when she looked at her oil, there was still oil that was there. And then the next day came and there was still more meal in the barrel. And there was still more oil that was there. And the next day came around and it came happening every day. That every day she went back, there was a little bit more to give. That every day she went back, that God kept supplying her needs. And God kept making a way. He kept making a way out of no way. He kept opening a door where there was no door. What you don't understand, that when you give him a little bit, he knows how to multiply it. He knows how to make a way. He knows how to give you just enough to get you by. There's a reason why, y'all, that you work in the same job as somebody else. You making the same amount of money as to everybody else on your job. But because you tapped in, because you gave God a little, they going through, y'all. They in hell not understanding how they gonna get by. But yet you just look at them and lift your hands and say, praise is what I do. I still got my praise. I still got my joy. And all you know is I don't know how. But some way and somehow, God is going to make a way. And God is going to open a door. So you just saying whatever you need. God, I'm going to give it to you. If you need my time, here it is. If you need my energy, here it is. If you need my service, here it is. If you need my energy, here it is. Because the Bible says that God will sustain you right until the rain comes what you don't understand i'm preparing myself because it's about to rain i'm preparing myself because the overflow is coming and i came to declare i came to prophesy to united fellowship i came to let you know that because you gave him little God is about to give you much because you gave him the little you had. He's about to overflow you. I decree it and I declare it. That overflow shall hit your house. I decree and declare that overflow will hit your marriage. I decree and declare that overflow will hit your finances. I decree and declare that overflow will hit your body. I decree and declare that overflow will hit this church. I decree and declare that God is doing a new thing and it's going to sprout up because we gave him a little. It's my season. It's my season to reap. It's my season to get back everything I've sown. All it takes is a little seed to get a big harvest. All it takes is a little seed to get a big harvest. One seed can give me an apple tree. One seed 
Just give me a garden So here you are God Whatever you need me to give I'm gonna give it with my hands up Whatever you need me to give I'm gonna give it with my mouth open Whatever you need me to give I'm gonna give it running and shouting Because I believe That you said I've never seen the righteous I've never seen the righteous forsaken Nor his seed begging bread If there's anybody here And you ready to go to the next level I dare you to give God your little I dare you to give God a praise I dare you to give God a shout I dare you to give God a hallelujah I dare you to give him a thank you Jesus Because something happens when the praises go up I just believe that the blessings are going to come down I call the blessing down I call the miracle down I call the favor down I call the overflow down I call the breakthrough down I call the miracle down It's got to happen y'all It's going to happen in this place And it's going to happen today Here's my little Here's my little Here's my little Here Elijah Here's what I got I give you everything I have God Because I trust you There may be somebody here You don't know Jesus Christ as your savior Send a man, send a woman